and it's going to record my screen. And this is the recording that will be posted on YouTube and also on Facebook so you can come back at a later time so that you can see um, what all we're doing, okay? Um, and you probably will be wanting to um, click back on it so that way you have, um, you can play with your emoji and all of that, Bitmoji, and then also come back and take a look at this feed um, and go back and get any pointers. All right, so let's get started. All right, um, let's see here. I apologize, like I said, I have tons of screens open. Okay, so first of all, this is my YouTube channel, um, Montserrat Ramirez, RMRZ. So I have here, and I did focus it on cosmetology instructors, but I do have a variety of different advisors, um, teachers, instructors, educators that are uh, with us and will be viewing this. So um, for everybody, it, you can use it any, in any platform, with any platform, any program or course, but also too for my cosmetology teachers out there, if you have not seen the channel, um, there's tons of great cosmetology stuff in here. So that is for you to check out. Okay. All right. So let's get started with our Bitmoji. Now, what we're doing or what I'm doing is using Google. Um, you want to make sure that you're on Chrome. Okay. Don't be on just the regular Internet Explorer. You want to use Chrome. So it works the best. Um, when I use my Google Drive, I um, obviously will be using um, the Google Slides, but you can also use it with, uh, you can do your Bitmojis, create them on Canva, uh, which is another program, or you can create it with PowerPoint, okay? But, so this is not the way to do it, it's just a way to do it, okay? All right, so here we go. Um, today I'm gonna be showing you how to create these. Well, just one of them, because it's kind of the same, it's repetitive, it's just creating your background. Um, we are all, I think at this point, we're all going virtual. Um, so it's just a matter of how do we do that? How do we take what we do every day and what we've done every day for maybe your first year teacher? Oh, so sorry <laughs> about that, because this is totally new to everybody and there's not a lot of us that could help because we haven't done it before, but maybe you've done this for five, 10, 30 years and you're like, okay, wait, I'm totally lost. So all we're doing is we're taking what we do physically and we're gonna do it virtually, okay? So um, that's the virtual classroom. Um, teachers usually go in and they want to decorate their rooms and they buy all the stuff and make it cute and make it match. And, and we're not able to do that necessarily. Well, not that we're not able to, but you know, we're at a point where we're like, well, do we spend that money? Do we spend that time or not? And so we're spending the time um, to do it virtually to make it more enticing with the students. So this particular first one um, is just kind of the home virtual one. And again, I'm, I teach cosmetology. Um, so my, my slides are Cosmo related, but you can do this with any, any kind of um, pathway or class or grade level at all, okay, your, your things would be different. Okay, so this was my home, <clears throat> excuse me, my home classroom, I guess you can say, why well, I had the couch and all of that, but I had my little desk. This one here, um, and I guess you can say this could be your like your home screen, um, or meet the teacher, or your syllabus, things like that. Um, and this one was more of a braiding lesson, so I added all these little things to my room, um, and then, you can, student can click on this image here or this image here, and it will take them to a link, uh, like a video, or if I pre record myself doing a braid on a mannequin, or if I pre record myself reading the students a book or something of the sort, or doing a diagram. So that's kind of what that is there. And then the other would be like, let's say, theory. Um, so if I have a particular chapter that I need them to go through the PowerPoint, uh, the students can click on this TV screen here and it will take them to the PowerPoint that they need to review for the day. Okay, so that's what the virtual classroom is. It's just the students, the teacher creating a, an image that is enticing and inviting to the students. So the students are gonna wanna click around or click on things or can click on things or to obtain information to do the lesson for the day. Okay, so definitely um, 
wanting to just to make it fun and exciting for everybody. Okay. Now let's uh, get a new uh, window open. So with a screencast-o-matic, what I did is I used my phone and I because when you create your Bitmoji, which is your little avatar, your little person, um, you have to create it on your phone first. So I went ahead and used the Screencast-O-Matic app. I downloaded it on my phone, and then I recorded what I was doing on my phone. Then I sent myself that link of um, uh, the recording, and I'm gonna go ahead and play that recording for you. And this is how you create your Bitmoji, okay? So again, if you wanna take notes, great. If you wanna go along with it, it's kinda gonna take you a while to create your Bitmoji because of all the selections, or you can just watch and then come back and, and redo it later at a later time, and you can rewatch this too, okay? So here we go. All right, so we are using our screen cast matic to record. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to get your Bitmoji. So first thing, you're going to go to your um, app store and you're going to do Bitmoji and it will pop up. It is a little teal uh, square here with a little happy face. So you want to click on get. It is free. I have to do the update, but I'm going to skip that for right now. But go ahead and you want to load that into your phone. Once you load that app into your phone, um, I obviously already have done mine, but it's going to prompt you to take a picture of yourself first, and then it's going to ask you uh, male or female, and you're gonna start your selection of your avatar. So down here, you're going to have various options. For example, um, you'll start with, let's say the hair, okay? You'll go down and you'll select the uh, Bitmoji, the little avatar, I guess it's also you can call it, that best fits your hairstyle, okay? Um, as you select the one that you like, you can then um, continue to click on the little icons. Um, and so then that way you can select, you know, everything that goes with your particular facial features. Um, you can add clothing. Um, to it. Mine uh, currently is uh, expecting a child, so I do have that particular Bitmoji, but you can add a variety of different outfits if you want to. Now, I just keep mine the same for right now. I'm always in black, so, you know, cosmetology color. Um, so I'm not going to change mine up until after the baby comes, but should I choose to change my avatar outfit, then I can do that on a daily basis and just save my image if I would like to. You can pick the actual outfit or you can pick individual pieces to make an outfit, okay? And then of course, when you select your avatars, you have your little closet and you can pick um, your avatars from there, okay? Once all of that is done, then you have your avatar, I'm sorry, your Bitmoji ready to go. Once that is complete, you are then gonna see your stickers here, okay? So it naturally will give you tons of different options. There are some that pop up for you. You can click various, uh, options that it offers you here at the top as you scroll, or you can um, type something in to find a particular Bitmoji. Um, let's say that you want one that is sitting. So you can do sit or sitting, um, and it will pop up a variety of some. The ones at the top are the most uh, common, um, and the ones towards the bottom are a little less. Okay, so here's one that I like. So I can save it to my phone or I can, um, you know, send it to some. All right, guys. So I wanted to apologize. I guess I must have stopped recording when that video clip ended. So for the rest of the um, presentation, it was not recording. So I'm going to 
go back and um, start from the beginning of where I left off. All right, so that's how you create your Bitmoji on your phone, okay? The next thing that you need to do, you need to make sure to have, is the extension. <clears throat> Excuse me. So up here, next to your URL address bar, okay, um, you're going to have your extensions. Now, if you hover over this puzzle piece, this is, it's going to tell you that's what the extensions are. When you click on it, it tells you all of your extensions that you have. These icons, if it's in blue, okay, mean, uh, will match the icons that are up here, okay. If you have an icon that is, an, um, or an extension that is the little pin is not highlighted, you notice that it disappeared from my extensions bar. If you click on it, it will pop up. Okay, so just key tip, click on this little puzzle piece for the extensions. Okay, this is um, where you're going to obtain your Bitmoji as you're working on your desktop. Okay, so from here, after creating your um, Bitmoji on your phone, you want to go to Google, and I would type in, which I already have it here, but I would type in Bitmoji and pull up the extension, the Chrome store, okay? This will pop up here for Bitmoji. I already have it, so I only have the option to remove but you will be able to have uh, an option here that says to load or download or get or something of the sort. So you click on that and it downloads it. Just follow the prompt and you can scroll down for more information as well. It will automatically load to your computer. Sometimes it will automatically put the little icon up here, like this icon here. It matches my Bitmoji icon. If it doesn't, click on the little puzzle piece and then make sure you click on the uh, extension pin and pin it. So click on it and it'll show up up here. Okay, very important to do that. You must have your extension up here in order for this to work. So a question or a thing too is you want to make sure that you're, um, when you're working in Google, um, you want to make sure that your, like my, my, my account up here, my Google account uh, is synced. So sync is on. So a question was asked, if I work on this at home, on my home computer, can I, will it be at my school computer? Well, if you're logged into your account at home and your information is synced between devices, it will be at your computer at school when you log on to your account. It's not that it's in your computer or your device, it's that it's in your account, okay? So I'm working with this account and these are all my extensions that are within this account and these are all my favorites that are within this account. So no matter, I could be anywhere in the world and if I log into my account on any computer or any device, this will pop up, okay? We just have to make sure it's synced. All right, so again, that was the Chrome Web Store, and you want the Bitmoji extension. Okay, so we're going to exit out of that. All right, so these are the three slides that I have previously created. Today, we're simply and only going to cover how to create your actual avatar, your Bitmoji, your character, um, and which we've already gone through, and how to create your, your background image. We won't be going over how to link things where students can click on the board and it sends them to a video, or students can click it, like this one, for example is the one I have for braiding. So I always teach students braiding at the beginning of the school year. So I will have this in one of my lessons. And here's me holding some markers, and here's the diagram. So in the instructions, I'll have uh, the students instructed to click on the diagram. And when they click on this diagram, 
on their end, it will link, it will send them to the link that I have added to this picture um, on a video or me, you know, a video of me doing the diagram for um, this particular braid or whichever brain we're working on. If I wanted to link them to a YouTube video, I could do that through this picture. If I wanted to do like a hide and go seek thing or a click around or explore, if they're just clicking on things, I can put a hidden, a hidden link and make it a challenge, even something fun for them. And they get like, oh, if you click around and you do, you know, find the secret link, then you get 10 extra points on your assignment or whatnot. And if they click on, let's say I make the clock a link, they click on the cosmetology clock and it takes them to a survey or a five question test or something like that, um, they get those extra five points. So that's just, it's not hard and it's not a lot, but that'll be another different class that I will um, do and post for you guys as well, okay? Today is only about creating the background um, and how to protect your image once you're done, okay? Um, so again, the first one was just like my before when we thought we were gonna teach from home. Um, so this was my couch and not, not that I have a purple couch, but this is my couch in my office and would be my classroom per se. So that's my home screen, okay? My, well, what are we doing today? My, this is just my standard screen per se. Let's say we're doing a lesson on braiding. This is a practical hands-on. So we're doing the hands-on tutorials and demonstrations of braiding. And so that's what I have this particular um, slide for. If I want to do theory, okay, then I have this particular slide where I have my books they can click on and it takes them to the digital book or if they have this um, power or if I have PowerPoint I want them to click on, then I have this option here for them to take us to that chapter, okay? Now, I do want to share with you, let me, um, share with you on just Google some images. Um, I just picked this one of some Google Classrooms that teachers have been creating. So now that teachers kind of know that what, you know, what to expect, like what well not to expect, but know that we're virtually teaching this, um, the start of this year for some of us, for some of us the whole semester, um, we, a lot of the teachers are starting to do these, and this is like the new craze, right? The new Bitmoji and the virtual classroom and all of that. So a lot of teachers um, are on the bandwagon and I think it's great. Um, it's fun when teachers love to go into the classroom and decorate and buy stuff and make it match and all of that stuff. And sometimes we don't have the money or the funds to do so because you know, you know it does get expensive. Um, but this is a great way to where you can make your dream classroom however, literally however you want, okay? And think outside the box. Be creative. You don't have to be an actual room. You can be outside in a background uh, where there's trees or, you know, ponds or animals. If you're a vet tech teacher, you can do a zoo or, you know, anything of the sort. So just get really creative um, depending on what you're teaching, okay? So for this one in particular, I wanted to share with you um, just some thoughts. Doesn't mean that it's just my opinion. It doesn't mean I'm right. Doesn't mean I'm wrong. It's just my thought, okay? When we as adults, we can see there's four different classrooms here. We as adults, right, we, we, we comprehend a lot more than students, right? We can dissect things. Um, and separate things and, and focus on things. Me as an adult, when I look at these four images, these four classrooms, one of them stands out as being easy to look at, and one of them stands out as being a little overwhelming, especially if this is new to me. So this one to me would be easy to look at. There's not that much clutter. The colors are very well contrasted. Um, and it's pretty, not plain, but plain enough for me to not be overwhelmed with it, okay? And kind of turn off 
uh, my desire to engage with it. This one is cute. It matches. It has the theme. It has the little dog with the, I think it's the little headphones or whatnot. Um, it's really cute. I love the idea of it. Spent a lot of time on this. I'm not saying it's bad. It's not bad. It's really cute. But for a, uh, it's a lot to look at. Okay, it's a lot to take in. For a first time student that doesn't know teachers are creating these Bitmoji classrooms and things of the sort, that may be a little bit overwhelming. And depending on your grade level or your age level as well, okay? So maybe, and this is my opinion, maybe at the very beginning, what you want to do is you wanna keep it basic. You wanna keep it simple, um, high contrast colors, not colors that blend in like this blue and this green, although they're very nice colors and they go well together. Um, it could be a little bit much for the student. So maybe at the beginning you want just basic and as the weeks or the months are unfortunately go by and we're still doing this, then you can add on to it because students will then, since a lot of teachers are doing this, students will be more aware of what a virtual classroom is and it won't be as overwhelming later as it will be in the beginning. So just be mindful of your surroundings in your classroom. Like for example, this one has, um, you know, some verbiage here, which may take, all of the stuff may take away from the verbiage that you want your students to focus on. Here, the only verbiage pretty much, there's some posters here, but the main verbiage is this, and this is what I want my students to focus on. So just keep that in mind, okay? But you can go on to, all the social media um, outlets, you know, uh, Instagram, Pinterest, Google, um, and you can search virtual classrooms and there's tons of awesome ideas. You can do themed days. Um, you can do uh, just about anything, anything you can imagine um, or get creative with, you can do with your virtual classroom. So just definitely check them out and get some ideas because there's tons and tons and tons of ideas. So what I do is I just go and I look at other people's stuff and I see, oh, well, that'd be cool. Or, oh, well, that might be cool for, you know, uh, my my course or my, um, I'm trying to find other ones here, <clears throat> or my class or my purpose. Okay, so not all of them will work for you. Um, if you work together, you know, you can send each other your Bitboji images and you can put various teachers in one classroom. Okay, so that would just be um, some ideas and some food for thought. Okay, all right, so let's get back to our Zoom here. Now, remembering that I'm in Google Chrome, okay, um, I'm going to be using the Google Slides, okay. Um, anytime that you're creating a, sl um, a slide, you want to have a new doc, a new file or new, new document, uh, document, unless if you want all of these to be in one lesson. If you want, this is Monday, this is Tuesday, this is Wednesday, uh, you might not want to put all these together. Your um, file might just have one slide with all the links inside of it. Um, that would just be up to you, okay? All right, so I'm gonna show you um, how to obtain images how to get your background in there um, and how to, you know, kind of maneuver and some tips and points and tricks and such. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and show you first um, kind of what I did or I've done. I worked on this last night and I didn't finish um, organizing this. So there's pictures all over the place. But um, when you do start to create and build your library of images you want to have folders and subfolders and such and these are like all of my bitmojis except for these two are in the wrong spot but these are all of my bitmojis okay so i want to save them to my computer or save them to my drive or usb or wherever you save your things to so that um if i want to use the sitting one again it's easy for me to access okay you go back one and let's say I want to use my logos, okay? My school logo or any logo that I'm working with. 
you want to um, have those logos available and you can put them in your PowerPoint uh, or your um, Google Drive. That's what I failed to mention. This works with um, Google, uh, I'm sorry, it works with the Google Slides and it also works with PowerPoint. So you can use it for both. Um, here are my virtual classroom images and these are all the images that I've used so far. It is and does get overwhelming once you start getting a lot of pictures in there. So maybe you want to do a folder of furniture, a folder of backgrounds, a folder of um, uh, lab supplies, or if you, for example, for cosmetologists, you want to do a hair coloring folder, a braiding folder, a facial folder, things of the sort to have a little bit more organization instead of having all these pictures all in one. So these I just save in case, for whatever reason, I want to change things up. I don't want to have to go back and do the whole process again. I just already have the image, okay? So that is definitely important. And I would just um, label them instead of it having, for example, here. Um, no, let's say here has just its regular um, file name. You can actually name it. So that way it's easier for you to search. Okay. All right, so let me show you how to get started. So we're going to actually add a slide and I'm gonna click on blank, okay? Now, like I said, my background is very light and everything pops. Of course, black is my favorite color. Doesn't mean you don't have to use, you can't use any other color, but um, it's not a lot of clutter, things are spaced out, and it's easy for students to look at. It's not intimidating, okay? So when you're creating your classroom, you're gonna have a wall and a floor. So there's two ways to obtain an image. I'm gonna show you both. One way is to search the web through this actual page, um, and you wanna do a PNG file a PNG means that there is nothing in the background. It is that sole image, okay? Um, floor and wall. Let's say, and the hardest part for me is to actually uh, stop myself from continuing to scroll down and down. And, and just find that one picture that will work for me or that I'm happy with or that I like. Um, it's just, you know, I just want to look at all the pictures and I just want to shop for the best one, right? So that's one way of inserting an image, okay? Now, I really like that image and I didn't save it um, and I really want to use it again for another slide. So. I'm going to um, show you the second way on a different slide, okay? So for this one, you're just inserting a picture and you change the size and there you go, okay? That's inserting, okay? Let's say that you click on, you go to Google. Another way, instead of PNG, it's transparent. Uh, actually, let me hold off on that. Let me show you. Um, wall and floor, uh, background, you can search it different ways. Let me give you a tip. When you click on images, if you don't want your image to be blurry, click on tools, size, and large. This will give you images that are not pixelated, so they're not blurry, okay? Again, like I said, there's tons of options. That's probably what's going to um, hurt you the most is going through and looking at all the different options and think, oh, I like this one or I like that one, things of the sort, okay? So let's just pick this one. I'm going to right click on the image, save as, put it in my pictures and um, I'm going to, I'm just going to leave the name, but you can rename it, okay? So I'm going to go back to my slide. I'm going to insert image, upload from my computer, go to my pictures, and here's my wall. You can insert it that way. 
okay? You can move this around, size it and whatnot. I'm gonna delete that. It downloaded it, so it's here. So I can click and drag, and it will put my image here. Um, a recommendation, click on background. When you choose image for background, you're gonna upload, browse, open. You can also drag it to that there, and done. And it will automatically size it for you. Now this one you can see has a um, watermark, so do be careful with copyright stuff, okay? This one's just for the example, so I'm just gonna keep it. All right, so there's my background. All right, so again, it was through background or through insert image, search the web on this page or upload from your computer. All right, so now that I have my background and I'm happy with it, and y'all, I'm really loving this one. It's really cute, I like the dimensions of it. Uh, this one's more uh, more basic, I guess you can say, but we'll go with it. Let's say that now I want to add um, my furniture and all of my stuff, okay? So I want a, let's say, insert image, search the web. I want PNG. PNG, again, means that there is a transparent image. Um, rug. For, uh, spelled that wrong. Apologize. Uh, rug. Okay, so let's say this is the rug. And again, there's tons of different. Let's pick this one. Um, again, you can click and drag. That's an option. So you notice how this particular image, although it encompasses this big square here, it's this image in the middle. If I move my, if I have my, um, I select it, and I have my little cross here, I can move the rug like so. Um, now I would recommend, and then you can also resize this, the rug if you want it to. You can make it thinner and you can make, change the shape of it. That's also an option as well. Now I would recommend that you crop the image solely because uh, it's just gonna be a lot easier when you get to, whoops, and do that. It's going to get a lot easier whenever you start getting into um, pushing your items forward or backward, which I'll show you in a little bit. So let's say this is my rug and I want to expand it like so. Okay, this rug, this image was a PNG file that did not have anything in its background. That's how I'm able to get this image. Okay. All right. So now I want a chair. So let's say that I put here, let's go to Google. I'm going to show you both ways. So you can type in transparent. And it's not typing. Whoops. Okay, what happened? What's going? Okay. Um, sorry. Uh, transparent chair. And I spelled that wrong. Okay, let's go to images. That's what happened. Okay, so now that we're in images, let's say that I have a chair here and I like this chair. So I'm going to click on this chair. I like it. I'm going to right click save as image. I'm going to put it in my pictures. And now I have my blue chair. Okay, I'm going to again, I can click and drag or go through and actually select my chair. Uh oh, here's my problem. And here's the problem that unfortunately you will actually find with a lot of your images that you get off of Google and even through this page here. If you don't put transparent or if you don't put PNG or both, which I do transparent, share, PNG, just to make sure to save me some time. But even then, not all of the pictures are an actual transparent or PNG image. So I really love this, this, and I really want to use this in my image, but how do I fix this? Okay, here is a website I want to show you that I absolutely love and is awesome. <clears throat> okay, let me get to the beginning of this. All right, this is remove.bg, bg for background, remove image background. It is definitely 100% free and 100% amazing. So what you're gonna do is definitely click on the star. Another little tip maybe for those of you that don't know, when you type in a website here and you click on the star, 
you can rename it whatever you want and click on done what it's going to do is it's going to add to your favorites bar so this here is your favorites bar so you know like in your phone when you open up your phone you have all your apps that's what this is here see apps so all of the or that's a little different but it's kind of like that so they don't all fit so this double arrow when you click down these are all of your websites um, that you have saved um, that you use a lot so these are all the ones that I I've, I use often um, I don't always want to um, have to remember or search for the website I just want to save it and so this is where I save it so remove background is right here and so I just search for the, the website click on it and it opens up the link immediately so that's just a tip all right so from remove background I'm going to upload my image I'm going to pick my couch open here it's working on the original document here it's removing my background so now it has removed the background so I'm going to download it here it is right here I'm going to delete my previous image and voila check it out my couch is now transparent okay well let's say that I want it on this side but it's facing the wrong direction okay so I'm going to right click on it rotate flip horizontally and now my couch is facing the right direction well maybe I want my rug over a little bit so my couch is not on top of my rug that's okay too okay here let's say that I want to put a plant so I'm gonna go in <clears throat> excuse me and I'm gonna insert a plant well let me see plant. so with my plant and this is again like the part where Definitely, it takes you just a second to pick the one you want. Oh my goodness, it's always hard for me to decide. I'm trying to find one that has a background. I'm not sure if I'm going to find one with the background so I can show you something that I need to show you. Oh goodness. Okay, fine. Big deal. I'll just use this one okay so I'm going to click on that one there okay well do you see how it has this little background here okay um, that is still within the image so I can remove the background but let me show you what else you can do as well so I'm going to go back to remove my background my home page I'm going to upload my image and I'm going to click on my plant dang okay let's switch plants I'm I apologize so I'm gonna click on this plant here just because it does have the background in, so that I can show you what I need to show you so it had the original I had a shadow here and so that in case you didn't see it let me show you what that image looked like at the beginning um, so this this image had the shadow um, here and then it had the background and had the gray that's the original picture okay sometimes you when you search something it doesn't always pop up the same so it has already removed the background which is why you see this checkered background so let's say that I don't like this leaf right here I can click on edit erase I can select the size of my eraser and then if I wanted to get rid of this leaf there I could do so or if I wanted to get rid of this leaf here I could do so as well and you can zoom in and zoom out however you choose whenever you're happy with your image you can click on download download image you can save your image to your folders so you can use it at a later time later time I'm going to delete that because it wasn't my favorite and I'm going to come in and use my pot now let me show you something now if I put my image let's say I really like my pot right there for whatever crazy reason um, let's flip it around to make it a little bit more 
ideal. And my, my, my pot is in my plant is in front of my couch and I want to move my couch. But because this big blue rectangle that is the image of this pot is in front of my couch, I can't click on my couch to move it. Okay. So when I was telling you, you might want to crop it. Let me show you why. So when you crop your image and you just fit this blue outline just around your image, if your pot is in front of your couch, you can easily click on your couch and now you can move your couch. Okay, so that's, for me, I don't like the big rectangles outside of my um, image. Okay, so now I'm gonna click my pot. So I'm gonna click my pot and I'm gonna put it back here. But I want it to be behind the couch. I don't want it to be fully shown. So what I wanna do is I wanna right click on my image. I'm gonna click on order and I'm gonna send backward, one. When you click on send to back, that means you're gonna put it behind the very bottom picture. Okay, so we put the couch in first, well, the rug, then it was the couch, which is why the couch is on top of the rug, and then the, the plant is now behind the couch because I moved it, okay? So I want my plant back there, and then I want my couch back there okay and that's what you can do like so let me move sorry let me move my rug a little bit <laughs> sorry my OCD is kicking in and that's how you can move things front and back and things of the sort all right so let's say that you're going to put a whiteboard well like I said the most thing that's gonna take you the most time is trying to find like all, I like the trash can, this pencil holder, the chair, the table, the computer, the rug. Those were individual items. The board, the clock, the couch, the flowers, all this was individual. So that's what's gonna take you the longest in creating because you wanna find things that, it's like going shopping, right? But you're not spending any money, you're just spending a lot of time, uh, a lot of time trying to get all this stuff together, okay? So here, let's say I want to add a whiteboard. Well, I already have the whiteboard saved onto my um, images. So I'm going to go ahead and just find my whiteboard. I believe it's closer to the bottom. There it goes, whiteboard, open. So let's say that this is my whiteboard and I want it here, okay? Um, if I wanted to, I could add text so I can insert Add a text box, or if you click and hover over this, it tells you text box. Click on your text box, and then you add your text box here. Okay, so I can do welcome, and then when I, you know, work with it, I can change my font. I can make it bold, underline. I can change the color. You know, whatever, however you want to do it. And then again, you know, you can size it well and then you can uh, change it up as well. Let's say you wanted to add um, your school logo, then you go and you find your, your logo and you add your school logo and it's already a PNG file and you can add your logo there, okay? Um, and you can see those lines that help you um, kind of space everything out, it's really nice. Now let's add our Bitmoji. Now I, like I showed you, already have a folder with my Bitmojis that I use, my little characters. So, and I don't need to finish organizing it, but anytime I wanna use one sitting, I already have it here. So I just click on that, open, or can drag it, and here she is. I need to make her bigger, and I need to make her a little bit more fuller, okay? I want her legs to touch the ground, so I'm just going to make her longer but I do need to make her a little bit more wide. All right, just so she looks more realistic than not. Okay, so again, this is a really big blue square around my image, so I could crop that to make it um, just around my image. So if I need to go back and click on my couch, it's very easily I can click on the couch, okay? Now that's one way to insert your emoji. Let's delete her, and let me show you how to insert your Bitmoji if you don't have them saved yet. You're going to come up here to your extensions bar. You're going to click on the Bitmoji little square. Um, and 
let's these are my recents so these are ones that I've recently um, used there's popular ones that'll pop up um, a bunch of them have things in them um, but let's say that I type in sit so these are the ones that are sitting so you know that one I would select okay tell me what to do I can right click copy image copy save as click and drag or you know there's various options so same thing I would do as I did with her previously okay I'm gonna give her a little bit of length here make her feet touch the ground and make her a little bit more full okay so that's how you would put um, your emoji in now let's say that you have a bitmoji that you want to use let's say this one but you don't want the thinkies, you just like the bitmoji. So save as pictures, bitmojis. Okay. I'm going to go to my, this is where it came. Let's erase her for a second. And I just want to put her, flip her. Okay. I want to put her here, like she's in the, very front of my image and but I want to get rid of this I don't want this okay I just want her um, a lot of times with the emojis you'll notice they're really cute um, avatar or, or, or character but you really don't want the words to it so you can go to remove background that website Click on the Remove Background, take to the home page. Click on Upload Image. You're going to take your thinkies. <laughs> it is removing the background, okay, which there was no background in there. It's just white. But um, you want to click on Edit. So Erase. You can widen the size. Get rid of, whoop, almost got rid of my head there. Get rid of the background, and then you can download that. Download image, it's right there. You can save it to your computer or you can just click and drag it and there she is. So you can make her bigger and you can flip her horizontally or him because gentlemen are also doing this as well. So let's say that that is my image there. Okay, so that way she look and you want to make it to where she's right on the rim. Okay, so that is how you have that image there. Okay, so creating your background um make sure it's contrasting colors make sure your emoji you know kind of looks correct this particular one and and on all of them um let me move her down there's a little point right here you can move your bitmojis over or any of your images as you choose by rotating this here and it gives you the little number so you can see where you're at as far as your angles and that works for any image. When you click on it, it moves it moves things around for you. Okay. Now with all of this, and this is bothering me because my leaf is maybe I want to flip that around. My leaf is um, coming out, and my OCD is getting the best of me. Okay. I don't love it, but we're gonna work with it. Okay. So what I want to share with you now is. Um, how you need to save this particular file okay now no oh, excuse me now you do not want to send this file itself to your students as a um, um, slide okay because when the student gets this and it's a, a slide that you have not locked then when they click on things, they can move things around. And when you come back, you're like, what happened to my classroom? It's kind of like when they're really physically there and they're messing up your stuff. And then you have to go back and clean up after them. Okay, that's, that's kind of funny. But um, you don't want them to do all of that. You want your stuff to be exactly where you put it. And you don't want the kiddos to be able to move them. So when you save your file, okay, go to file download download a pdf document okay very important pdf document when you do so okay the student is going to receive the document in this this way 
but they're not going to be able to click around. For example, if this was not a PDF, and it's not, there's my, I can still move my avatar around, but if this was not a PDF, I would be able to move the table, the chair, the computer, but I can't. When I click on it, it's all one image, okay? So you want to make sure that whenever you are sharing this document, it is a PDF file because you will spend so much time on this, creating this as perfect as you want, and you know, having your OCD get in the way, make sure, making sure the plant is in the right spot and facing in the right direction, and then send it to your students, and then everything is all messed up when you come back to it. Or it's messed up for the next student, and the next student's like, wow, my teacher doesn't know how to use this. And it's not that you don't, it's that it was moved around. So please make sure to make that a PDF file, okay? So that is pretty much it. Um, you can create so many different backgrounds, so many different ideas. I mean, imagine this one sounds pretty fun looking. Um, again, the linking things, articles, websites, videos, recordings, things of the sort, assignments, uh, PowerPoints, um, Prezi's, things of the sort, I will make another video for, but this is just how you create the Bitmoji and the background, okay? Now you guys don't spend too much time on this, okay? Um, but once you create it, um, it's there, all right? I would not put all of my slides in one um, Google slide file. I would I would make uh, their own. So if braiding, if you have a braiding for your braiding lesson, I would put it in one because think about this. If this was week one, week two, week three, week four, but I didn't want the students to have it all at once, if I download it as a PDF document, they're going to get all of my slides. Okay, so keep that in mind um, when you're creating. And it's okay if it's just one slide and one one file. No big deal, okay? Save it. Um, well, in Google, um, it saves it automatically to your drive. Um, if you have it that way, there's things you can change, of course. But um, that's how you create your Bitmoji and your um, virtual classroom. So thank you so very, very much for checking this out. I hope this helps everybody. Um, in no way am I a pro. I did not invent this or create this, although whoever did, it was a genius. Um, I can imagine how uh, evolved this will be by September or however far along we get with this virtual teaching stuff. Um, and all the awesome stuff that we're going to be able to do. So in no way is this the only way to do things or the way to do things. It is a way to do this and a way to create your um, virtual classroom. I highly recommend you go on to YouTube and Instagram and um, there, there's Facebook groups and things that you can search for virtual classrooms. You, there's bit, Bitmojis that can move. I saw one the other day that, that now he can talk. <laughs> there's this guy that has a, bit, a talking Bitmoji. Um, you can take a picture of yourself and be your actual Bitmoji, your actual avatar. It moves, it talks. Um, so there are so many other different ways. Just gotta spend a little time, do a little research, um, but Again, like I said, don't overwhelm yourself, first of all, because it can get stressful, uh, especially if you have OCD and you want everything to match and be perfect. You still have to create the lesson. Okay, this is just a picture, to be honest. Um, but definitely um, don't overwhelm your students with too much in the beginning. Okay, keep it simple, keep it basic, and then make it better as you go along. Okay? All right, so if you have any questions for me, please let me know. Um, I'd be more than happy to help as much as I can. I will continue to do videos and post them and share them with you guys, but please, please, please don't wait for me, okay? Y'all go find, do your research on YouTube. There's tons of videos out there already. I know some of you guys have already started. The private sector, you guys have been going. Um, some districts, are starting in a few weeks, uh, some not till later, but 
you know, just play with it, do some research and, you know, I'll post my videos, but don't wait on my next video until you move on. Get on there, get creative, have some fun, enjoy it, and don't spend too much time being too nitpicky about all of it. Um, and then don't forget to share your um, images as well, because I would be um, just thrilled to see what you guys came up with. All right, so that does it for me. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we will see you guys on the next one. Bye.